What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here. We are mere days away from the National, and we have a metric ton of random new stuff to get caught up on. A lot of it circulating around the National itself. So, probably no charts and graphs today. We are going to go news heavy. And just a little precursor for kind of content this upcoming week. I have no idea what it will look like beyond Wednesday. Content will flow as normal the beginning half of the week. And then once we get to Thursday, I have no idea what it'll look like. Uh, in the past, what I typically do, you're not going to get vlog style content here per usual. I will do recaps. I usually record them in the morning before I head out on the show floor from the day before. So I hit the scene Wednesday going a day earlier this year than normal. And I'll record a recap Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning. So on and so forth. Uh, no weekly sports card market update next week uh, because I will obviously be at the national. So next week, the weekly sports card market update takes its annual year off for the national. And then Monday or Tuesday, I will probably do a full show recap. I might take one of those days off. We'll see, uh, depending on when we get home and how I am feeling. So that's kind of the plan for content for the rest of this week. There might be breaking news videos mixed in. Who knows? We are in the thick of it now. I look forward to seeing any and all of you that are planning on attending. Like I said, I will be there Wednesday through the weekend. I don't, as of right now, plan on going in the show on Sunday, uh, but that could change. Usually Sunday is the head home day, but I will be out and about at various trade nights, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. So uh, one thing that it didn't slip through the cracks, I saw it. I just never had a chance to get to it because we had the ComC PSA news that came out on Friday uh, and some other stuff going on. Oh, the Kith shoes. I had that video. So this just kind of slipped through the cracks. Uh, SGC is back and grading at the national on-site grading again at the national from SGC. First time they have done it since pre-pandemic. $35 a card for on-site grading, $15 take-home special. So still no permanent pricing specials out of them, uh, but 35 on-site is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, CGC wins the award at $20 a card by end of show. SGC comes in next at $35 a card, and then you have Beckett and PSA at $100, and I believe $150 uh, if you're a Collector's Club menu member for end of show grading and there's obviously expedited services and so on but 35 bucks pretty solid especially you know if you're uh you know picking up vintage raw or something like that and you want to get it checked out before you take it home uh, but it was interesting to see i got that prediction wrong i thought that they would just do the raw card review like they did in the past but interesting to see them set back up for realsies this time not sure what my plans are yet for on-site grading i typically don't uh, I still may do some reholders at CGC. I got to reach back out to them uh, and see what pricing is on that. If they decided they were vacillating between five and $10 uh, for reholders on site, hopefully it's five and then maybe I'll get some stuff reholdered. Uh, and then I'm debating if I want to grade anything on show premises, but I don't think that I do. So that's kind of the lay of the land for on site grading at the nationals from the four big boys. Why we are talking about the nationals. So this happened this week. Uh, a viewer of the channel DM this to me. Essentially what happened was, I think this was Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Wednesday night, I don't remember. Uh, the Atlantic City Tourism Board threw this up. Uh, that The 2026 National was going to be in Atlantic City. Now, the, the dates listed on there, you could see are much longer than the normal four days of the show or whatever. That's including dealer setup and takedown. That runs Sunday to Monday. That's why, uh, because that's when all that jazz starts to happen. So I tweeted this out and it went a little crazy on the old Twitterverse on IG. I saw Ryan from Card Collector 2 shared it. Uh, Sports Card Nonsense guys talked about it on the podcast on Thursday. And the, so the, the funny thing was, is after this came out, uh, some other people come forward. It was like, hey, I'm a vendor slash dealer. We haven't voted on this yet. So I don't know if this is the case of the AC Tourism Board jumping the gun or... Is the fix is in, or maybe they're not voting. Remember, this is the last year the current national management group, a new group, takes over. I am not familiar with the players 
involved with the national other than Ray Schultz, who does a lot of the marketing and stuff for them. I do not know the inner workings of the national committee. So this snuck out. It, it made the rounds that evening. Everyone got all up in arms. I don't blame them. The Atlantic City National. The convention center space was fine. Everyone being all spread out sucked. Safety sucked. The city sucked. The commute sucked. It's it's not easy to fly in and out of there. Uh, it's not easy to drive into. It just everything other than the actual show itself sucked. So I know a lot of people were shocked when this popped up. Well, fast forward the next morning, page not found. The Atlantic City uh, Tourism Board yanked the page. So once again, I don't know if this was someone got a little too ahead of the game. Someone had an inside scoop or Atlantic City was just hoping they were getting it and, and just threw it up there as a placeholder event. I really don't know. It got pulled. I assume we will get official word this week. They usually announce the next couple. We know next year's is in Cleveland and the year after that is back in Chicago. And then it goes to the great unknown. We do not know where it goes from there after Cleveland and back to Chicago. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what news we get this week. The other site that was on the docket, I believe, was Atlanta. I think it was Chicago, Atlanta, and Atlantic City, I think, were the three options for 2026. I could be wrong. I know Atlanta and Atlantic City were definitely two of them. Uh, of those three, I would just, just rather go back to Chicago, to be quite honest with you. Uh, if I had a second choice, it would be Atlanta. And if it was a third choice, it would be Atlantic City. If they do it back in Atlantic City and Fanatics events are up and running and they are what we think that they're going to be, that would be a very interesting show to see what happens. Uh, that would be a very tone-deaf choice. Essentially, from the way that I've understand it, what's been told to me, I have no idea if this is accurate or not, but I've heard this from a number of people that Atlantic City, they essentially get the venue for dirt cheap to nothing. Uh, Atlantic City basically begs them to come there so they get a sweetheart deal. So that's why it rotates through there every once in a while. I don't know if that is the case or not, but it would kind of make sense giving the context clues here. So we'll see what happens this week. Uh, the dealers and vendors vote. I believe everyone said on Tuesday, so we should have word on that later this week. Uh, my guess is it goes back to Chicago or maybe Atlanta squeaks in. I'd be okay with Atlanta. Uh, I would just prefer it just to go back to Chicago. Chicago is a very easy breezy setup. The next thing that happened, let's talk trade nights. Uh, so this has been percolating for a while. Um, I had heard some stuff on this, but I could not lock anything down. There was some scheduled trade nights, like where people rented hotel ballroom spaces uh, there was a vintage slash non-sports one, I believe, and something else. Essentially, if you scheduled a trade night and you did not clear it with the National, they were getting canceled. Uh, the, the word on the street was is that the National was reaching out to the hotels and yanking the convention center space, essentially. So that happened a couple of weeks ago. At that time, there was some other stuff percolating uh, about them chatting with hotels, trying to shut down the pop-up trade nights that just happened in the hotel lobby. I couldn't get anything official on that. I, to me, it seemed absolutely crazy. So I didn't really talk about it. I just kind of let it let it do its thing. And if someone else wanted to bring it up, they could, because I just didn't have it stone cold. And I don't run with something unless I am pretty sure I have it locked down uh, for my own independent stuff, not just running with whoever puts up a video on something. So fast forward to this week on the Sports Card Nonsense podcast, they came out and basically said, we have this lockdown. Uh, we've heard from multiple people. And like I said, I, I, I kind of heard some of the same stuff. I just didn't have it as stone cold as they did. And they basically said that the national committee was going to the hotels and threatening the hotels and that if unsanctioned trade nights, if people were doing trades in the lobbies, that they needed to shut those down with hotel security, essentially, allegedly. So once again, I heard that I was surprised, but not surprised because I knew that this had kind of been floating around. To me, it just seems absolutely it's it's the most short sighted thing ever. If the, supposedly it was because the dealers were mad. I don't know. To me, it seems like the most short sighted thing ever where the National Committee was blaming the dealers for it. 
that that is a big draw of the show. If you eliminate the pop-up trade nights, especially in Chicago, because they really do thrive in Chicago, if you eliminate the pop-up trade nights in the lobbies, you are going to piss a lot of people off. And that is a big incentive for a lot of people to go to the show. You know, you go to this thing and the card show runs all day. Okay, cool. Goes to like five, six, seven o'clock at night. And then afterwards you have, you know, a lot of people get together for dinner, depending on, you know, your situation, you might have events to go to or corporate dinners or whatever the case might be. Uh, parties, there's all sorts of stuff. And then you kind of have the rest of the evening from like nine o'clock on, you're either going to drink, go back to your room or transact. It adds a lot of liquidity to the show and it brings bodies. I bet you way less people would attend if these trade nights didn't exist in these hotels. So it seemed wild to me that they were going to try to shut these down. It just seemed very short-sighted and very stupid, especially coming off the heels that Fanatics events were going to enter this space and this old school thinking by the national committee. So fast forward to the next day, card porn makes this post saying they talked directly to the national committee board members and that they got the story straight and there is not, they are not shutting down the trade nights. That is not the case. There is this funny little caveat here. Uh, this includes hotel lobby activity, although the hotel itself may restrict this. That just feels like a weird asterisk of like, and I don't know what went down. I, I, I truly don't know. Card porn talked to them. I didn't. Was it, uh, you know, did the National Committee go to the hotels and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't shut down the trade nights. Wink, wink. You know, I, I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see what goes on this week. So there was a little bit of a plot twist there, maybe a little bit of a backtracking, or maybe maybe it was one way, and then th they got all the blowback from the Sports Card Nonsense podcast and changed course. Or odds are, like most of these situations, it's probably somewhere in the middle. The truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. And then plot twist again, Sports Card Nonsense on Monday's podcast uh, says they spent an hour on the phone with the president of the National Board of Directors to get their side of the story. Definitely seems to be some different stories going around even since that conversation. So we will see what they have to say on Monday. Uh, I know this seems like a mountain out of a molehill, but this is actually a pretty big deal. The trade nights are a major, major reason to go to the National. Just being able to hang out in the lobby, trade some cards, buy some cards, sell some cards is a big, big deal. It adds a lot of value to the trip. That's the thing. It's expensive to go to the National. My hotel room, even in Chicago, is like $1,200 for the week, plus travel too. Now I'm driving, not flying, plus food, plus time off work, all that stuff. It is an expensive trip. It is not cheap if you're going, especially if you're going for the most of the week. And the trade nights are a value add. I, I view those as a value add. They are extra enticement for me to go to the show and stay longer. If the trade nights didn't exist, maybe I don't stay as long, you know? And there are some there are some trade nights that got official clearance, you know, Card Collector 2s. Uh, there's a Don Diego, I believe, TCG trade night. I could be wrong on that. And a couple other ones that, you know, worked directly with the National to get those set up. So... We will see what happens on Monday during the Sports Card Nonsense podcast when we get more clear clarity on this. And we'll see what happens when we get boots on the ground in Chicago itself later this week. Next up, moving off the national, there's not all national chat here. Gemrate put out some interesting numbers this week. I was going to do a separate video on this, but once again, got kind of lost in the sauce a little bit. First half total items graded. And this is compared to second half. That's what the percentages are from 2022. Uh, the big takeaway here, I don't want to get too much into the weeds on the percentage gains because there's a lot of weirdness with that. SGC's had very aggressive pricing specials with the, with the $9 stuff, good for them, and, and TCG. Uh, CGC's numbers do not include CSG, so there's no sports cards included in there. The big, the big thing is, is when you just look at this, the amount of market share that PSA has is just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 6.4 million 
and then you have to combine the other three together and you basically get the 1.5 million. Like just absolutely wild, wild stuff. And this also shows that grading has not decreased. This is like grading as a business. Now, one thing, like I said, there's kind of a lot of weird asterisks to kind of throw in with that second half numbers. You know, prices have gotten cheaper. Uh, turnaround times have gotten better. All that stuff needs to be factored in. So I, I don't want to focus on the percentages too much. But generally speaking, grading is drastically up first half of this year versus last half of last year. That's a lot of cards. Uh, what is that? Almost 8 million cards graded just between the four major companies. Once again, most of that being PSA. Uh, but when you look at these numbers like this, it shows you really how much everyone else is really playing for second place. When they talk about, you know, when if you go on the SGC fanboy pages about, oh, they're going to take down PSA or Beckett's going to take down PSA or CGC is going to take down PSA. First off, none of them have the capacity to even sniff PSA. If Peter came out with the most aggressive thing ever and everyone loved SGC, they'd be buried. They can't, even with a brand new facility, I doubt that they can handle a million cards a month like PSA does. Nobody can do that. So that's PSA's biggest advantage is that they could just price to fill those coffers. So we'll see what happens with grading prices once we get post-national. Uh, we'll see if anyone else has any news announcements. We still have not, other than national pricing, nothing from Beckett. That's the biggest one hanging out there in terms of news that I'm expecting. Does Beckett do something and does Fanatics have something up their sleeve? Those are the two biggest things that I am on alert for heading into this week. Uh, you know, does Fanatics announce exclusive deals finally with people? Do they acquire another company? Is something crazy happening? I don't know. We'll find out. Next one, uh, Dakota Sports Card Anonymous did a little video on this. I just wanted to touch on it very quickly. eBay is tightening up raw card conditions. You now actually have to select from a drop-down menu when listing. This has kind of been around for a while, uh, but it looks like it's more of a requirement now. I didn't dig into it super deep. I don't sell a ton of raw cards, but... Just be aware there may be some additional drop-down values, and they give you a guide to go off of. If you want an in-depth look at it, go check out Dakota's video now that he is essentially unretired uh, and making content again. Last but not least, non-sports card stuff. Uh, Marvel Masterpieces came up again, this time at 600 bucks a box, and this time disappeared within three minutes, basically. So the distributors are playing their little games uh, I would expect it to come back up in stock again, probably at 600-ish a box, probably sell out in less than five minutes. And then after that, they'll probably jump the price again. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing keep creeping up and up. They will push it to the limit and see how far they could go before demand wanes off. But every time they put this stuff up, it is gone nearly instantly. Now, I don't know how many boxes they're putting up. They're probably doing it on purpose to drive FOMO. It is what it is. Um, I was hoping to touch on silver pack distribution and that sort of stuff. I saw all of them are doing the program, uh, for the national, but I haven't seen like what the pack breakdown is like for specifically a tops Chrome hobby box versus a jumbo and that sort of stuff. Uh, I have one jumbo tops Chrome box coming from, uh, fanatic slash tops from the pre-order. Uh, I saw striker breaks, got some blasters early. He opened his yesterday. Looked pretty decent. Centering looked good. He said surface wasn't terrible or what you'd expect from a Chrome product. Uh, because I was debating, you know, maybe potentially grabbing some Chrome stuff if there were silver packs attached to it uh, and selling off those silver packs to eat into a big cost of uh, the cost basis of the, the hobby boxes. And then when you factor in the MVP buyback as well, uh, you can get a lot of little extra value out of that stuff. So that's where we sit. We are days away, 48 hours from now. I will be on the road, heading solo this year uh, to the National. Uh, I expect to get into town sometime Wednesday during the day, hit the show floor Wednesday, and then we are off and running. But yeah, if you see me roaming around the show, don't hesitate to come up, say hello, give me a nod, whatever the case might be. Show me what your pickups were, chit chat for a little bit. Um, the only thing that I know in terms of places that I will be, uh, will be at card collector two's trade night on Thursday night. I am planning on attending that. Uh, I have some corporate events Wednesday and Friday, but Friday night, I do plan on being in the Lowe's bar. Uh, Filmington is having a little bit of a get together there. 
So I'll be filtering over there sometime later in the late evening, probably around eight or nine o'clock uh, and be hanging out in the lows. And then we'll just see where the pop-up trade nights happen uh, and, and where the people flow. So that's all I got for you, boys and girls. Looking forward to seeing some of you later this week. Peace.